All right, let's talk about the special eigenvalue feature number six, the determinant property, my least favorite. And in a moment, you'll realize why. Now, a moment ago, we talked about the trace property. All eigenvalues add up to the trace of the matrix, which helps you in situations when you know all but one of the eigenvalues. Now, this will also work similarly. This feature will help you once again when you know all but one of the eigenvalues of the matrix. So the eigenvalues add up to the trace, while their product is the determinant of the matrix. So it's very similar, except the trace is very easy to compute, and the determinant requires a lot of work to compute. So is it worth it? Yes, but it's not as striking as the trace feature. So if this is the matrix A, then what you can state is that the product of the eigenvalues equals the determinant of A. It's beautiful. It can be explained similarly. It's maybe uh, a little less deep. Well, you can't really compare it to us. I really like the trace property. I'm partial to that one. So let's use the last two properties combined to determine all of the eigenvalues, uh, at least, and maybe the eigenvectors of this matrix. So one of the eigenvalues, and once again, the empty slots are zeros. So one of the eigenvalues, you know, it's three. Let's write it down. And the corresponding eigenvector is zero, one, zero. That was eigenvalue feature number one. Now let's see, what can we say about the, the other two? Well, we'll talk, we'll think about their sum, and we'll think about their product. So their sum, all three, now don't be fooled, this is not a diagonal matrix. It is also not an upper or lower triangular matrix. This is not a diagonal. So don't think 1, 3, and 16. Not, not at all the case. This is the main diagonal. So the trace of this matrix is 3. And because one of the eigenvalues is 3, the other two add up to zero. So the sum of the other two eigenvalues is zero, which means they're opposites of each other. All right, let's keep that in mind, they're opposites. Now let's use the determinant property. Now the determinant of this matrix, once again, I, I presume that you know how to calculate determinants, and at least for three by three matrices, but the determinant of this matrix is actually negative one times three times 16. Negative. And because one of the eigenvalues is 3, of course, the product of the other 2 is negative 16. Because all 3 times this times this equals minus 48. Cancel the 3. Lambda 2 times lambda 3 equals minus 16. So they're opposites, and their product is negative 16. So they've got to be 4 and negative 4. 4 and negative 4. And it's one again one of those situations where you have to work for the eigenvalue, for the eigenvectors. Let's just see what the one corresponding to four is. Subtracting four from the diagonal, we end up with minus four, zero, one, zero, minus one, zero, and sixteen, zero, zero, minus four. And of course, I see right from here that uh, one. 0, 4. 1, 0, 4 is the corresponding 1, that's correct. 1, 0, 4. 1, 0, 4. While we're at it, let's compute the one that corresponds to negative 4, plus here, plus here, plus 7 here, doesn't play any role, so 1, 0, negative 4. There you go. 1, 0, negative. All right, so this was a demonstration of the product property, and now it also helps you to determine the one remaining eigenvalue when you know all but one, unless one of those was zero. If one of those was zero, then the determinant is zero, and this method doesn't work anymore. Okay? So what, but what we saw here is if we know all but two of the eigenvalues, then the trace and the determinant approach combined can help you determine the remaining two from a little two by two system. Of course, it's nonlinear, and if you were to solve it not without being able to guess the solution, it you know it would evolve a quadratic equation, but still overall worth it. All right.
Get ready for the grand finale.